So let's uh, uh, welcome Professor Budgos Gill for uh, his third lecture on Oracle of Theory, Quid Distribution, and Algebraic Dynamics. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Which one? So now this will be uh, part two, four of my series of talks. I think I forgot to, to put the numbering at some point. And this will be now heights of subvarieties. So remember from the previous day that we have introduced uh, line bundles, uh, <clears throat> then among the line bundles with uh, an adelic metric. This means that the, uh, we have a metric on each place of MQ, and most of them come from a model, and some of them are just continuous metrics. And among them, there were one, uh, a class of metrics that we call, uh, I call them smooth, but maybe it will be better to call them smooth and model which means that on the Archimedean part, they are smooth, and in the non-Archimedean part, they come from a model. These are the kind of metrics that were originally uh, introduced by Gilles and Soule. So let's start with this kind of metric. So let X be a variety over Q, and <coughs> then L uh, bar a line bundle. It's a line bundle. And then assume that I have X a model of always projectives. So remember that I say that all the varieties I will consider will always be projective. So let's say that uh, we have X is projective. I have a model that is also projective. That is part of the definition of being a model of X. And then I have L a model of L. <coughs> Just for simplicity, I will assume that it is a model of L and not just a model of some power of L. And I also assume that the metric at infinity is a smooth metric. And now we can define for every, for every cycle Y inside the cycles of dimension P on the model X, we will define a product C1 hat of L bar, bar to the D so P plus one times Y. So we will define an intersection product like this inductively. So this uh, intersection product is defined by the following properties. The first property is that it is linear on Y, in the sense that if I have that the Y is equal to A Y1 plus B Y2, then C1 hat of L bar times Y will be equal to A C1 hat of L bar times uh, to, the D plus, to the P plus one to the P plus one times Y one plus B times C one hat of L bar to the P plus one times Y. This means that I can reduce in order to determine this product, I can reduce to the case of irreducible, uh, uh, irreducible cycles. Now, since I have a model and the model, okay, Yes, A and B are rational numbers, yes. Now uh, I have my model and it's a model of a spec set. It's something like this. Now, if I look at an irreducible cycle, I have two possibilities. Either the image of my cycle is just one point or the image of my cycle has to be the whole spec set. So the cycles are of the two kinds. So irreducible cycles can be either vertical, which means that they are over a point, or horizontal, which means that they are spherical. So let's say what is the height in the 
vertical case. So if y is irreducible and vertical, then this product C1 of L y to d plus one times y is just given by, now I can take the model L. So vertical means that the projection of y will be just a number p, a prime on the base. So then I will take uh, L, the model. I will restrict the model to the fiber over p. Now this is a line bundle on a variety. This is vertical, which means that it is supported on xp. And so I will take the this to the power uh, uh, oops, now the yeah the uh, divisor c1 of l of d to the dimension d plus one times y so this will be just the geometric dimension sorry i made a mistake so here because it's always this problem of thinking of the variety on the generic fiber or thinking on the model now since i am taking varieties on the model, the dimension has to be plus one. Now you see why is a variety of dimension d plus one on the geometric fiber. This is a line bundle on the geometric fiber, so I can make the intersection of the divisor associated to the line bundle with the variety. So it's just a geometric intersection, but I have to normalize and I have to multiply by the logarithm of the prime. Okay. And uh, now if the third condition is the condition that will give me an, <coughs> an inductive method to compute the height is that uh, if y is vertical, okay, now we choose a section S of L such that uh, y is uh, again, y is supposed to be reducible. Y is not contained in the divisor of S. You see that if I have a divisor and I have a subvariety, reducible subvariety, that is not contained. In so here it was it was uh, here is uh, vertical and here is horizontal. Sorry. Yes, so it's uh, horizontal. Then we choose a section. S of L says that Y is not contained in the device of, of uh, S. And then in this case, C1 hat of L bar to the D plus one times Y has to be equal to, then <clears throat> we have uh, the, to C1 hat of L bar D times the intersection product of the divisor of S times Y. So I can make the intersection product. So here I am intersecting with a Cartier divisor. So this is a well-defined cycle. And then I multiply by this guy D times. But I have to add a correction term, which is the, so this will be the contribution on the model. But I have to add the contribution at the uh, special fiber, and this will be the intersection, the integral on YC of the logarithm of the norm of the section with the metric at infinity times the first term form of L bar to the power. Okay, so this gives me a inductive method of constructing the height of any uh, <coughs> of any subvariety of uh, the model is clear. So you can see that in the horizontal case, I am reducing the computation of the height of a subvariety of dimension d plus one to computing the height of a, a subvariety of dimension d plus computing this integral. And then I can go on until I get varieties of dimension zero. But all varieties of dimension zero are vertical. Hence, I can apply this the part two. So this gives me a process the 
thing one has to check is that this process does not depend on the choice of the different sections when it's constructed. Okay? Because I am not asking that it's a global section. I am only saying that it is a rational section. And you have plenty of rational sections. So the only thing I ask is that this is a rational section that Y is not containing the device. And this can be obtained in other ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am assuming that my variety is projective. So you can always take your line bundle as difference of two projective ones and then use Bertini or use uh, whatever. Okay. Now. <clears throat> And now finally, if I have now Y inside X, so now this is a variety, uh, a sub variety of the genetic fiber. Then we will define the height of the variety Y as the C1 of L bar to the D plus one times. So this is a sub variety of dimension. So this one is the one of dimension D times Y bar. So this is the closure in the model divided by the degree. So C1 of L D times Y and the dimension plus one. Okay. So uh, the height is defined as this extending intersection product on the model divided by the geometric intersection, the geometric degree and D plus one. This is just a normalization. Okay. And then if I have a point X, observe that I am only defining the height of subvarieties defined over Q. So in some sense, uh, if now I have a point that belongs to uh, X of Q bar, then the height of the point X will be equal just to the height of the Galois orbit of X. So of X is the height of the Galois orbit of X divided by the degree of x. The dimension is zero, so d plus one is one. Okay, so in some sense, I am, we are putting together the fact that we wanted that all the conjugates have the same height. This means that in some sense, the height is something that is attached to the Galois orbit of the point. And then I am dividing by the degree just because I am dividing the height among all the possible uh, conjugates. Okay. So it's clear now what is the height of a subvariety. But this is, uh, this works because I have, so I have used that this is a smooth metric because since this is a smooth metric, I know that uh, this uh, C1 of L bar is just a differential form. And then I can take the product of the differential form and I can integrate. And I have used the fact that I am in a global model just to be able to define this intersection product and make this inductive process. Okay. Now, what happens in the case of uh, admissible line bundles? Yes. So uh, here, so I'm saying that if I have a point which is defined over Q bar, then the, I define the height of the point. So this is a definition will be the height of the Galois orbit of X is the Galois orbit of X, which in this case is the same as the closure of the point X in the model. Okay. So is the the. So you, uh, what you have to do is you take your point over Q bar, you project to Q, then you will get a thick point, so a point with a high degree, and then you compute the height of this point, but you divide by the degree just to spread the height among all the points. Any other questions? Uh, this y bar is the closure of y in the model. Yeah, so this one is the closure of the of uh, in the model. Yes. So because I am taking just a sub variety on the generic on the variety over Q, then I have the model. So I have to take the because oh this is almost series. Here I have defined the intersection product with sub varieties of the model. But I want to define heights 
of some varieties or my rational variety. Then, hmm? what was it again? Yes. No, no, no. This is a definition. The definition. Yes. So the definition is that the height of y is defined. I take my subvariety y, I take the closure of this subvariety over the model, and then I make the intersection product with this meta line value that is supposed to be smooth and coming from a model. Then I normalize. So in principle, some authors call this the height. Some other authors uh, normalize the height like this. And then I normalize dividing by the degree of the, the geometric subvariety, and also I put the dimension here. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes. Exactly. C1 hat, and then in the denominator is just C1. Hmm. More questions? Well, the point is that uh, if you have, uh, so the, the point of X bar is not a subvariety of X over Q. So the subvariety of X over Q is just the image of the whole orbit. So you will get a thick point that when you take the pullback, uh, you change base to XQ, it will be spread on the conjugates. But this will be, if you want, this will be a single point on the, on the variety over Q, but a point of higher degree. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have my uh, we have a projective byte over Q and we have a line bundle and then let's assume that uh, we have a uh, L bar is an admissible metrics adelic line bundle. And remember from yesterday, this means that there exists a sequence of metrics and B that converges to the family of metrics that I have. And this sequence satisfies, uh, this was written yesterday, so satisfies that first there exists and U inside the spec set such that the norm n b is constant for uh, x in u that for uh, sorry for b in u that for b not in u then the norm uh, b n uh, or n b converts to the norm B uniformly, so this conversion was uniform, and the third condition is that all of these families uh, and B were semi-positive and smooth. Okay, so we can and um, a metric was admissible if it can be well approximated by a smooth. Uh, and then the theorem by Shousan says that the limit when n goes to infinity of this L bar n C1 hat to the D plus one. So for all, let's write it for heights. For all y inside x, so for any subvariety on the rational points, the limit when n goes to infinity of the height with respect to L bar n. So L bar n will be the line bundle L provided with this family of metrics. This uh, of y converges to a limit. Compresses to a limit 
that does not depend on the sequence. Only depends on uh, Y and L bar. Okay, so whatever I approximate my line bundle, I will get the same limit. Hence, I can define the this limit. So this uh, will be by definition the height to respect to L bar of Y. So now I can define heights of super varieties with respect to any uh, admissible line bundle. And one has to say that in this theorem, it is important that all the approximants are semi-positive. So you try to say, okay, let's forget about semi-positivity. I want only to ask that I have uniform convergence of a smooth things. Then it's easy to produce counterexamples to see that then the limit does not exist, that you can get different limits. So it's really important to have uh, that it is approximated by semi-positive things. So here, positivity is, is crucial. Any question? Okay. So now we have a machine to produce heights out of this uh, uh, <coughs> admissible adelic matrix, and we want to see some properties. Now, the key point is that we have an analogy between geometry and this uh, arithmetic. So now we can try to uh, mimic <coughs> uh, some theorems in geometry. Now, if you look in geometry, uh, many theorems uh, or many basic theorems will tell you about the existence of global sections of a line bundle. Now, for instance, the Riemann Rock theorem, the importance of the Riemann Rock theorem is because it produces instances where you can assure that you have, uh, you have sections. Or the typical, uh, I don't know, the Nakai Moisison criterion tells you when a line bundle will be ample. And being ample means that powers of this guy will have a lot of sections, will be generated by global sections. So, one important thing is uh, <clears throat> so, basic theorems in geometry are uh, theorems that tell you when you have global sections. What will be the analog here? So, what is a global section in this setting? Now, if you look at the, at the definition I have given you of the, uh, of the metric associated to the model, so if I have a, a model L of a line bundle L, then it turns out that a section, or a global section, a global section uh, S on X of L extends to a global section of L script L on the whole X, if and only if for all places and for all points, the norm of the section at the point X is smaller or equal than one. So remember this definition that uh, the norm was defined as on any curve, I have to look at uh, what uh, do I need to multiply in order to get the section to extend. Then if I have to multiply by something that has poles, poles have a high, uh, <coughs> high norm and then uh, it turns out that the, that the section will have a high value. But if the norm is smaller than one, this means that it can be extended automatically. So at the end, it turns out that a section uh, on the generic fiber extends if and only if the norm is smaller or equal than one. Which in some sense uh, tells us that we should be interested in small sections. So the analog in arithmetic of global sections in geometry will be small sections. Okay, so then we'll say that now I have my L bar, a line bundle with an admissible metric. And then S, an element of H zero on X of L. And then we'll say that S is a small section 
if for all places in MQ, the sup to the norm B sup of S, this is just the supremum of the norm of S of X, B, S over X, is smaller or equal than one. Okay. And we will say that it is strictly small. If it is small, and the norm S infinity sup is strictly smaller than one. Okay, so strictly small will be that it is small everywhere. But there is a place, for instance, the place at infinity, where it is not only smaller than one, but it is strictly smaller than one. Okay. Now, what is the relation between small sections and the heights we were defining previously? So recall that if I have a point X that it does not belong to the divisor of a section S, of any section of the line bundle, I gave you a formula for the height of this point, the height of X was equal to the sum for all B inside M of Q of minus the logarithm of the norm of S at the point X, A, B. Okay. Now, imagine that I have a small, a strictly small section. So, okay, if S is small, then this means that what is inside the logarithm is smaller than one which this means that the logarithm is negative. Since I have a minus in here, I get that this is automatically positive. So if I have uh, a small section, I know that all the points outside the support of the universe of the section will be uh, bigger, uh, will have positive height. But if S is a strictly small, then the subnorm of S of X will be smaller than one minus epsilon. And then this will imply that the height of the point X will be bigger or equal than the uh, log of one, the, um, will be bigger than minus log of one minus epsilon, which will be bigger than some constant C strictly bigger than zero. So if I have a strictly small section, then I know that outside a sub variety, all the points will have uh, height uh, strictly bounded below by something positive. So the existence of small sections, in some sense, is important to know the existence of points with a certain height. Okay. <clears throat> so if I have a very small section, this is telling me that I cannot have points of very small height that are dense on my variety. Okay. So now let's try to mimic some geometric theorems in this setting. Let's start with the nakai moshison criterion. So we are in section now three, which is basic properties. And part three one, which will be a small section. So then uh, <clears throat> one first question is, do I have criteriums to assure that there are plenty of small sections? For instance, a criterion like the Nakai Moisesson criterion in geometry that tells me when a line bundle is sample. We have a theorem that we will call the arithmetic Nakai Moisesson.
that tells the following thing. So I have x over q. Of course, everything can be said over a number field, but let's write it over q. Then I have L bar an admissible uh, line bundle. But I will add the condition that the geometric part L is ample. And I have N uh, yes, and continuous adelic line bundle. Then if for all y inside x, the height with respect to L bar of y is strictly bigger than zero. Observe that this is the analog in the geometric case that I have a line bundle and I am asking that the degree of all super varieties is bigger than zero. Then the consequence of the classical Nakamura-Moseson theorem is that then the line bundle is ample which means that powers of this line bundle will be generated by global sections. Then here we get the same result. Then there exists some n bigger or equal than zero, such that, let's put n zero, such that for all n bigger than n zero, the line bundle L bar tensor n, tensor with this n, is generated by strictly small sections. Okay. So you see it's the perfect analog of the nakai Moshison criterion in general. But the point is that I am saying that for all y's, the height is positive. In particular, I am asking that the height of the whole x is positive. So I am not uh, going to the claim and think that only with curves is positive. So I am asking that for all super varieties is positive, including x. Yes, yes. So it's for all y inside x. In particular, is x. In particular, the degree has to be positive. Yeah, yeah. So I am not going the step to go to the claim and uh, criterion that I only need to intersect with curves as long as the total degree is positive. Okay, <clears throat> okay so then this is an Akai Moisison criterion. The next result will be the, <clears throat> the Hilbert Samuel theorem or the analog of the Hilbert Samuel theorem. Uh, let's uh, now introduce, so I can now look at H0 of some uh, <clears throat> of the line bundle L on X. This is a Q uh, vector space. I can look at B, that will be just H zero of X comma L tensor R. And now the metric at the Archimedean fiber will, in, will induce a norm on this vector space. So then the absolute value at infinity, the norm at infinity induces a norm on B that uh, is just the supremum. So the norm infinity sup is just taking the supremum of on all the points of the usual norm. And on the other hand, I have a lattice gamma inside H0, which is defined as the section S on H0 of XL, such that for all places that are not the place at infinity, the sub norm of S is S more equal than one. Observe that if I have a model, this means that I am just looking at the sections over the model. Okay, and then this is a lattice on this vector space. Now that I have a lattice on a norm vector space, it is natural to consider the volume of the question. And then we'll define the chi sup as minus log 
of the volume of B over gamma. And this has to be thought as the analog of the Hilbert Samuel of the Hilbert function of the Lyman. Uh, when I take the values of this guy on powers of L. And I will also introduce another invariant that is, uh, so I will define as H hat zero of X comma L, which will be now the sections, the X inside gamma such that, or the S inside gamma such that the norm of S um, Sup, so infinity sup, is also smaller equal than one. So these are just the points that are in the lattice and in the unit ball, maybe they are none. And then one defines the arithmetic volume of on X of this L bar will be just the uh, study the asymptotic growth of this space. So this will be the limit when N goes to infinity or when L goes to infinity of the logarithm of the number of elements in this H zero hat of X L big L bar. So this depends on the metric uh, divided by, and now I have to divide by the dimension. So let's see, yeah. L to D plus one divided by D plus one. Okay. So this uh, quantity in some sense tells me how the uh, global sections grow with powers of L. Okay. And now uh, the famous, uh, the classical Hilbert Samuel theorem can be seen as a part of the Riemann Rock theorem and tells you that for, if I take a line bundle, I look at the Hilbert function then uh, this Hilbert function will be a polynomial and the main coefficient of this polynomial is given by the intersection of the line bundle with itself. And then there is also a vanishing theorem that tells me that if my line bundle is positive enough, then the Hilbert Samuel function will tell me just about global sections. So there will be no H1. So I can use this Hilbert Samuel to estimate the growth of the of the uh, dimension of the space of global sections. So what will be the analog in this setting? Then the analog is almost copy word by word the, the geometric statement. This will be the arithmetic Hilbert Samuel. That is due to uh, the first version was uh, by Abes and Bush. Bush uh, based on estimates by Bismuth by Cero. So this uh, is a difficult problem, but then extended to this setting by Shogu Sang. And then what is the statement? So now uh, the statement is if uh, L is an admissible adelic line bundle, Then this chi sup of n times L bar, so the powers of L, this is given by C1 uh, of L bar hat times uh, x divided by, uh, multiply by, uh, well, what's L? L to the so this is uh, the dimension is d plus one to the d plus one divided by d plus one factorial. Okay, so this plus lower degree terms. 
it's bright. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, O, a small O of L to the plus one. Okay. So this will be the, the Hilbert Samuel there. That this chi sub can be, has a, a asymptotic expansion where the main term is just a polynomial of degree D plus one on L. And then the coefficient is just given by this intersection product respect to x. And if the height of y is bigger than zero for all y, then I can apply the uh, Nakai motion criterion telling me that powers, big powers of L will be globally generated by strictly small sections. And this will imply that the arithmetic volume ball hat of x l bar is just equal to the c1 hat of l bar and to the d plus one times x. So you get exactly the, in some sense, the perfect analog of the Hilbert-Samuel theorem in, in geometry. No, so the point is that the, I have written just this small o of this because the next term will be of the form log of L times L to the, uh, to the D. So it's not a polynomial, there is an, a log error term. The problem is that it depends uh, whether you are putting here the sub norm or the L2, no, L2 norm, and then the result can be proved with the L2 norm. I think in this case, it's more like a polynomial, but then you have an error term because you are changing the norm and then you get an extra term of log L times L to the D. So it's not a polynomial. So the next term will have a, a log part. Questions? No? Okay. Well, uh, gamma is a, is a lattice because, uh, for instance, if you look at uh, the case where you have a model, then this condition that the norm of a sub is smaller or equal than one is actually the same that I am looking at the sections, the global sections on the model. And then in some sense, what I have here is a Q vector space, and I am looking at the integral points of this Q vector space. This will be the ones that extends to the, to the model. So basically this is the heuristic of why this is a lattice. So this will be an integral uh, subgroup of the... Okay. Now, <clears throat> so we see that in some sense, the game here is that many theorems in geometry can be translated to the setting and will give interesting results about the, the height. And, and the next result, oh. I need to introduce another set of invariants. That will be the successive minima. The successive minima. That in some sense, so the point is that I am interested in heights of points and I am interested in points of a small height. Now, what it may happen is that the point of a, of a small height gets concentrated in some subvarieties. And then I want to distinguish between what is the small possible height of a generic point and what is the small possible height of any point or what is the small possible height of points containing lines or things like that. So I want to, to know, uh, to classify the possible small points. And then for this, we define the flow thing. So the, the uh, basic thing is as always E projective over Q and L bar an admissible line bundle. And then I define 
E sub i will be just the supremum for all subvariety set container in X of codimension of set equal to i of the infimum of the height of X for all points inside X minus set of Q bar. Okay, so you see that I am looking at the heights of points and I am looking at what is the minimal possible value of the height of points, but I take out subvarieties. So the, if you see, if I look at E minus one, sorry, E D plus, uh, N, uh, D plus one, this means that uh, I will, so I am doing this correctly, yes. So if I take E D plus one, what I am looking is, okay, there is no subvariety of codimension D plus one, because I am just uh, taking a, a variety of dimension D. So I am looking just at the infimum of the possible heights. So then this will be the absolute minimum the absolute minimum of the of the height. So it will be the, the minimal possible value of the height. If I look at E0, no at E1, what is this? So I am looking, so I am have the right to throw away subvarieties of codimension one. That means I can throw away divisors, which means that I am looking at the generic minimum. So this is what is called the essential minimum. Okay. And then the other minimums will tell me what happens in certain subvarieties. So for instance, uh, E2 will tell me that, okay, on a subvariety of codimension two, I can find some points of a smaller height, but if I am outside the subvariety of dimension two, then the height will be higher. Okay, it's clear. No, the, the, this minimum is the absolute minimum, and the other extreme, the E1 is the general. And what also is clear is that E1 is bigger equal than E2, is bigger equal than E3, and so on until I reach E D plus one. So we have this, this inequality. And then there is a theorem. This is also due to Sun. That tells me that the E1, the essential minimum, is always bigger or equal than the height of the whole variety X. And in terms, the height of the whole variety X is bigger or equal than the mean of all the mean. So it's equal than one over D plus one of E one plus plus E D plus one. So there is this estimate that tells me that I have the, the different minima of the variety and the, they can be estimated with the, respect to the height of the whole variety. Okay, now I have presented all the tools uh, that we need, and then uh, now in the in the next day we will try to uh, use these tools to get some results. And then for instance, what I see, uh, yeah. So let's start at least introducing what is an arithmetic dynamical system. Uh, that will be the first case where we will apply these results. <clears throat> So what is an arithmetic dynamical system? So <clears throat> this will be part four. 
And the first part, we want to introduce the invariant metric. Okay, so what will be a dynamical system? So what I need is X, again, a projective variety defined over Q. I will have L, an ample line bundle. Define it also over Q. And then I want a map. F is a map from X to X. It's an endomorphism. Such that, ah, it's an endomorphism. Uh, so this is one, two, three. And four, uh, I want an isomorphism between the line bundle F up star of L and some N times L with N bigger than one. So what I want is a endomorphism such that there is this ample line bundle and I want that the premise of the line bundle with respect to the endomorphism has to be isomorphic to a multiple of the line bundle. And I want to fix this line bundle. It's clear what is an arithmetic dynamical system defined over here. The basic examples so I can look at x equal to p1 for instance and then the map f will be the map that sends set to set to the power n. Or I can take X equal to A and abelian variety. And then the map. So in this case, this N is exactly this N here. And in the second case, if I have an abelian variety, I can look at the map from A to A that sends a point T to, uh, let's say this is multiplication by M. So to M. In T, so the so this is uh, we have the, the abelian variety is an abelian group, so I send a point to the point plus the point plus the point plus the point n times, and in this case n is equal to m to the square. Now, if I have an uh, arithmetic system like this. I can easily, eh? what? Oh, sorry, yes. No, no, I think the, the line bundle is, is satisfies this, this property with the theta divisor. So I take the theta divisor and then it satisfies this, this property, I think. No, 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 but I am not saying the degree. Now I will compute the degree. This n is not the degree. Let's compute the degree. So what is the degree of the map? So if I compute, uh, let's say, C1 of F up a star of L to the dimension, which is in this case D. This will be the exactly the degree of F times C1 of L. So by the projection formula. So if I have uh, to the power D. Okay. But on the other hand, I am using this isomorphism. This is C1 of N. L to the power D. So this means that this is N to the power D times C1 of L D. Since I am asking to my line bundle to be ample, this means that I can cancel this and this, and the degree of F is the dimension to the, is N to the dimension. So this is why the degree is much higher than uh, what appears here. Okay. So and multiplication by N 
of course, the, the dimension will be uh, n to the two times the dimension. But the, the isomorphism of like matters is this one. Yeah? Questions? So it's clear now? Okay. Now, <clears throat> So, and then this, uh, we can call this a polarized if you want a uh, dynamical system. What is that? Maybe I will stop here because now I want to give a theorem and the proof and I will not have time in five minutes to do the theorem and the proof and then it's better to, to start with this the next, the next thing. Okay. Comments? If not, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>